So there's one more sub chapter to go, which is about grounding. So let's dive into the, the chapter on grounding. And because this is the very last sub chapter in the complete course on photovoltaics, I'm going to keep this very short in the point. You're almost done. Um, so grounding is also referred to as earth or ground. And if I put it in my own ways, you are providing a return path. You're providing a return path in case of a uh, of a compromised electrical circuit right so normally you have your standard electrical circuit but if something goes wrong then you want to provide a return path for the electricity to flow in such a way that you will not uh, be in any danger of electrical shock the second function that an earth or grounding system may have in your setup is that of providing an electrical reference point because we often have talked about electrical uh, pressure the sort of voltage right so the electrical pressure to voltage refers to the voltage, the potential difference between two points. So the voltage describes the voltage difference between point A and B. But now we don't know the absolute voltage, the absolute pressure of A or B. Most of the times we assume that A is zero and B is whatever value, right? But you can also use an earth and grounding system in order to make sure that your point A, where you're measuring the voltage from, towards point B, that you make sure that point A is at, a, at the same voltage level of earth, of ground. So you're literally saying, okay, I'm assuming that earth is my zero, is my absolute zero, and now I'm measuring between earth and my life connection, and this is the electrical pressure which I describe in volts. So let's go to the whiteboard and look at a very simple example of an earthing system, right? So what we are looking at here is a small concrete box that somebody made somewhere in the field. And you're looking at both the grounding wire and the grounding rod. It can be as simple as this. So the grounding rod is often a very thick copper rod that you hit in the ground. And then your grounding wire comes from your electrical panel, whatever, somewhere from your system. And you're connecting the grounding wire to your grounding rod. And now you've made an earth connection. So now that you have a bit of a, a visual idea of what I'm talking about, let's go to, let's draw a diagram. Let me show you how an earthing system could operate for you. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. So we let's assume you're watching your television, right? And your television is provided with a live and a neutral, so it's being provided with power through the, the red line. You're watching television, and of course, you, you have earth around your house, around your residence, and we have just hit that earthing rod that we just looked at. We've hit it in the ground. And then what we do is we connect all the components of your television, normally the, the casing that is normally not conducting electricity. So the, the metal components, they are not conducting electricity, but they're just part of the, the structure of the television. We're connecting this through the wire, through the grounding wire. We're connecting it to your rod, right? So what you're seeing on, on the left hand side, so the, the green wire and the orange rod, that's what we just saw in the, in the photo. Now let's assume something goes wrong with this setup. So anything can happen, right? The, the TV can break down, you can have rodents, something messing up in your system, or uh, in this situation, your television is getting wet. Uh, let's assume that you're watching television outside with your friends, you're watching a game, it starts to rain and everybody uh, gets inside, right? Everybody's happy, but nobody's thinking of the television. So there is life power being fed, fed towards television, a television is out there in the rain, and at some point, due to the water getting into the TV, the life power from your power cables is connected with the armature, with the, the outside casing of your television, which is normally not conducting electricity, right? If you would now walk outside and you want to change the channel, or whatever you're touching your television, you would get an electric shock. That is really, really dangerous, right? Because now all of a sudden, the armature of the television is life it is conducting electricity if you would touch it you would get a shock but this will not happen because you've properly installed an earth system in your general electrical setup and as a result of this the moment that the armature of your television uh, receives power due to the short circuit caused by the rain in your television the current will start to flow from the armature 
of your television towards ground, right? And as a result of that, there's a lot of current actually going straight to ground and the protective equipment inside of your uh, power line, so either a fuse or break or whatever you have installed, now notices that there's a lot of current all of, all of a sudden running towards Earth, and therefore it will trip. It's either way your, uh, your Earth leak, leak detection or your breakers or your fuses, but something will kick in and will disrupt the circuit. It will cut off the power towards your television. So, of course, this is a very simple example or explanation of how an Irving system works. But at least you understand what, I, what I'm talking about when I'm saying a, a safe return path. And you can see how it avoids dangerous uh, situations as much as possible, right? So, now let's go online. Let me show you uh, how you can actually connect the, your solar arrays to ground, right? Because a lot of people ask me how to ground their solar systems. So let's take the data sheet that we already downloaded from Canadian Solar. I am not affiliated with Canadian Solar. So we looked at the, um, the Hydean Black, so all the black high density monocrystalline perk module. So when we go to the second page and we zoom in a little bit here in the drawing, we can see that it says that it has grounding holes and there's six pieces of grounding holes with a diameter of what I assume is five millimeters. Um, it doesn't say it particularly, but I think for this panel, there are two grounding holes on the left side and the left long side, two on the right long side, and then one on the smaller horizontal and one on the smaller horizontal bottom one. So that's how you can see where the, where the grounding holes will be and what kind of sizes you can expect.